What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Neuralink. This is a company founded by Elon Musk and potentially his most exciting, disruptive, futuristic, crazy out there idea, but it's received almost very, you know, very, very little attention in the press because it's so new, it's so out there, and such little information is known about the company. But today, I wanted to do a deep dive into what Neuralink is, what they're building, how this could impact society, technology, et cetera, and why this is a perfect example of HyperChange. And this is, you know, an episode I've been researching for a while, I've wanted to make for a while, but it's honestly been like a little bit scary to make it because it's such a freaky futuristic technology that is almost inevitably going to be our future and is the way we can symbiotically merge with artificial intelligence and become like these true cyborg beings. So it is just an absolutely freaky um, um, concept. And before we get into it, there's a brilliant article <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still a little bit sick. By Wait But Why, which is this awesome blog published a year or about a year ago. Incredible! It's almost like a book. The blog post is so long that details Neuralink. So I'm gonna put a link to that. But I wanted to bring it up really briefly because there's a quote from the beginning of that article that sums up why this is such why Neuralink is such a crazy a concept and important company. I'm convinced that it somehow manages to eclipse Tesla and SpaceX in both the boldness of its engineering undertaking and the grandeur of its mission. The other two companies aim to redefine what future humans will do. Neuralink wants to redefine what future humans will be. And so just, you know, work with it, try and wrap your head around it. So what is Neuralink building? What is this company? They are building implantable brain computer interfaces, specifically according to their website, ultra high bandwidth brain machine interfaces. Essentially, these are microchips that could be implanted into your brain, connect you to the internet, basically a very, very futuristic iteration of what the laptop or iPhone is today. Um, it'll be the way we tap into the collective consciousness of society, aka the internet, um, and it'll be a way we can do it with much less friction than we do today. My favorite sort of, you know, way to conceptualize what Neuralink is, is that let's, you know, Steve Jobs has this famous quote that says a laptop is like a bicycle for the mind. And Neuralink is setting up to be a hyperloop for the mind. And so the implications this has in technology and society are going to be incredibly immense. And that is why I think this is a company worth following. Now, Neuralink is super, super new, and there's very, very few details about it. Um, the company was founded in 2016. It's based in San Francisco. It wasn't even really publicly announced until 2017, so, that, you know, just very, very new. Um, it, but it is indeed a real company. They have employees. I couldn't really exactly figure out how many. My guess is 10, 15, 20, 50, somewhere around there. They have 11 open jobs on their website, all high-tech, you know, sort of software stuff. Um, and they are founded by Elon Musk. The company is very well-backed. The company raised $27 million. Nobody knows from who. My guess is from Elon Musk, most likely. So now you might be wondering, like, why is Elon Musk focused on this? You know, what is the point of Neuralink? Why build a chip that goes into your brain to access the internet and etc.? Well, the biggest reason, according to Elon Musk, at least from my understanding, is is this fear that, or maybe analysis or prediction, or that artificial intelligence, when it becomes much much smarter than what we are, you know, general artificial intelligence, um, you know, eventually it will get so smart so rapidly that there's this scary analogy that, you know, we will be like a house cat to what artificial intelligence is today. We'll be like a pet. That's how different, you know, our level of intelligence will be with, with AI in the future, maybe even bigger than that. And so the only way to effectively, you know, have a chance at survival in this new AI future is, is to potentially symbiotically merge with AI and become a bionic cyborg. I'm not making this up as crazy as it sounds. That is Elon Musk's theory. And we could literally have via the Neuralink artificial intelligence in our brains at all times and leverage that to sort of become superhumans and have superhuman intelligence. And that is what Neuralink is trying to build. And so the first things that they actually want to solve are, are you know, many cognitive diseases. Um, so there's actually a huge, huge medical reason for this technology as well. Things like Alzheimer's have been mentioned um, that could be treated with this technology uh, with the Neuralink. But eventually they want to be able to make it so you can do essentially telepathy, which is communicate with anyone around the world instantly um, by just thinking thoughts, which if you think about it sounds crazy but that's basically what we already do with our smartphones when we text people it's just that Neuralink would be a lot faster and a lot easier and this is the, the core of Neuralink and and tying it back to you know okay maybe it's this crazy futuristic sci-fi thing but you know to me it's it's 
almost an exact natural evolution of the smartphone. Because when you think about what the smartphone is, it's a way that we interact with the digital world. You know, this, this, the, and this, according to the Joe Rogan podcast, um, Elon talks about this and he says, you know, we're basically already cyborgs with our phones. Um, there's just a, a very limited amount of data flow in between ourselves and the phone. It's like a very small straw. And that data flow prohibits um, sort of our ability to leverage technology. And so the entire premise of Neuralink is that by by implanting chips in your brain, the flow of data will be vastly, vastly superior, and therefore the benefits of technology will be vastly, vastly superior. And so you'll be able to, you know, use Google anything at a moment's notice. You could literally tap into any information at any time second. You could read a book. You could uh, make any sort of calculation. You could all do this by leveraging your Neuralink so much faster than you would be able to do on a smartphone or laptop. So that is why I think this is the next iteration of that technology. Moving towards the more practical business side of Neuralink, the most fascinating angle that I see here is an incredible interdependence on Google. Because if you think about it, everything that you'd almost want to do on your Neuralink, any information you want to access, you know, you, you need to have it sorted some way. It needs to be easy to find. And right now, Google Google is the simplest and fastest and by far most efficient way to get access to any information on the internet. And Google itself is using a ton of artificial intelligence algorithms to be able to index all this information on the internet. So when you think about it like that, the Neuralink is the hardware that will get Google's artificial intelligence and index of global knowledge into your brain or as close to into your brain as or as possible for now. I hope this is making sense because it's it's almost such a mind-boggling technology um and, and and you know there's so many different implications that this could have in society because you know when you think about it like it it it, you know, it's one thing to have a laptop. You're so much, uh, you have access to so much more information. You're, you know, you're in many ways a much smarter, more intelligent being when you have your smartphone or laptop and someone who doesn't. Um, and if you think about what the Neuralink will be, you know, the hyperloop for the mind, it's almost scary how much smarter and how much more efficient of a human you could be if you had a Neuralink chip implanted in your brain. And so this brings up, you know, all these debates of, okay, well, when this technology first comes out, it's going to be incredibly expensive. The only people who are going to be able to access this technology are people who are incredibly rich. And those people are going to get an even, you know, bigger leg up than they already have in society, potentially drastically increasing the wealth gap from where it is today. Imagine, you know, 0.001% of humanity becomes this incredible, super intelligent bionic cyborg while the rest of society is waiting to save up to buy their Neuralink, I mean, even if you only have a one month or one year advantage with the Neuralink and with somebody without, that could be, that could be life-changing. And so there's so many more questions than answers with this technology. Um, it is such a fascinating way to think about the future. And to me, it's it's inevitable because think about what we do as humans. We always want to go faster, better, merge deeper and deeper with technology. You know, it's only inevitable that we want to find ways to be able to increase that flow of information between ourselves and the collective human consciousness of the internet. And that is why the Neuralink, I think, will disrupt the smartphone. You won't need a smartphone. You won't need the smart glasses. Um, if you have the Neuralink because you can just, you know, I'm assuming the Neuralink will be able to pull up images. It'll be able to record video at any turn. You'll be able to share that video instantly. You'll be able to look up any fact. So if from a from a tangible business model perspective, um, Apple is almost the business that's most at risk with Neuralink because you won't need any of their hardware devices. So that's a really interesting existential threat to Apple, how Neuralink could be uh, become the next Apple as a company. And if you think about what's Apple's market cap right now, a trillion, I mean, that you know, I don't want to say Neuralink has trillion dollar market cap potential, but if they succeed in what they're doing, then I really, really do think this does. And I think it'll be the next iteration of the smartphone. It'll be an even bigger business than the smartphone is today. But that's why the fascinating thing to me is the dependency on Google. Um, you know, I can't see a way where Neuralink, unless it has its own search engine built in, is not going to be relying on something like Google, um, you know, almost exclusively to be able to access information. And so, Anyway, that is, you know, a little bit of taste of, of what uh, Elon Musk is building. And now you might be asking like, okay, well, like, what's the progress on this? You know, what's going on? And so um, in early 2018, it was reported that Neuralink was originally trying to get uh, an animal lab testing permit to be able to start testing in mice and rodents, um, I, even in the, the, somewhere in San Francisco. And so apparently that didn't work. And then in May 2018, they signed an agreement with the UC Davis Primate Center 
paid them a grant of eight hundred thousand dollars to do a bunch of research you know it's very they're very tight-lipped about what research they're doing what's actually happening um and there's an, a phenomenal article at gizmodo by an author called kate congress who wrote both articles actually the one about mice testing as well that i'm going to link to which you should all read which describes how um and i didn't know this but uh, the uc davis center where, where Neuralink is doing the testing um uh, has like more than half uh, it has 2,530 primates specimens or research subjects out of about 3,600 in the entire state. Um, so th this is like the epicenter for research on primates. So my guess is Neuralink is already partnering with this lab at UC Davis to start implanting Neuralinks into chimps or monkeys. Um, now that brings up a whole ho host of ethical questions as well. But but that, as far as I can tell, is the progress. And um, Elon Musk was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast and hinted at the fact that Neuralink would have a big time announcement or its first sort of public announcement upcoming in the next couple months. Let's adjust for Elon time. I'm thinking that'll come sometime 2019, 2020. So that'll be sort of the first public coming out moment for Neuralink and, and maybe a roadmap for the company's technology. And so this, you know, this is the episode of HyperChange, you know, as a channel that wants to document how technology um, and software is eating the world, is changing our daily lives, is going to impact the future. Um, I think Neuralink couldn't be more at, at the dead center of HyperChange in the future. And I, it, it's it's such a scary technology because there's even these, you know, Elon Musk has even mentioned that eventually, like, your consciousness will be on the Neuralink and you could upload it to a different body using Neuralink's technology. And it, there's just so many different ways that this could go. Once we become cyborgs, I know a bunch of you are probably worried about the government spying on you 24-7, hacking into your Neuralink, and then controlling you. I mean, this is such crazy sci-fi stuff, but um, we have the smartest, in my opinion, we have the smartest, most successful entrepreneur and inventor in the world working on it, funding it. There's no restrictions to how much money this company is going to raise. Uh, you know, they have an open $100 million funding round. As I said, they did $27 million of it. My guess is these guys could raise money from anyone they wanted at a snap. Um, what's interesting is there's a is there's a very weird, um, on the SEC filing listed as the president of Neuralink is someone called Jared Birch Hall, who is also listed as the only director of the boring company when they raised money. I tried to Google who Jared Birch Hall was. I have no idea who this guy is. My guess is he's someone who's worked, worked on Elon Musk's team and is setting up all these companies. Um, and it's not like OpenAI, it's a for-profit corporation. Um, so just a host of questions that, you know, it's just, it's really just mind boggling. And if any other entrepreneur was doing this, I wouldn't take it that seriously. But Elon Musk is someone who has a vision of the future and uh, not only has a vision of the future, but has proven time and time again that he can achieve the impossible and and build that vision out into a real world product that actually is what he says it was. And whether we don't have Neuralink chips for 10 years or 15 years or 30 years, you know, who knows? But the bottom line is this technology is being developed. Smart people are some of the smartest people in the world are working on it. And the impact when it arrives on society is, is going to be hard to fathom today. And so I think it's worth everybody's time to follow Neuralink incredibly closely, um, see what the announcement is, you know, follow this technology. Like, and I also, in my Googling, found that Facebook is also trying to develop a similar technology where you can just like think a text and send it to someone. But apparently they're working on something that would be a hardware device that's outside of your body. So like some weird helmet with a bunch of tubes. I don't think that's going to take off as well. But interesting that Facebook's developing a competing technology as well. There's also a company called Kernel, um, which is developing a similar sort of implantable chip. So it's not even just Neuralink that's doing this. And um, I also think, you know, many of you out there have probably seen the popular show Black Mirror, which is this futuristic sci-fi show where and there's an episode where people have this device that I think is called like the Willow, which is basically exactly the Neuralink. It's this chip in your brain. It records your everything you're doing at every second. Every memory you've ever had in your life is recorded with all five senses, and you can tap into it instantly. Um, and that is just a really and in that episode, like it, it's funny because they they bring it down to like this couple who's fighting and they're trying to figure out if the girl cheated on the guy or something, and they you know she erased part of her memory, and they're like it's just such a freaky weird future that, that that we're heading towards and so that's why I was honestly like a little bit scared and freaked out to make this episode um because it's just 
it scares me, honestly. Um, and Black Mirror is coming. Um, oh, one more thing about the, uh, in terms of financials, valuation, the company's raised $27 million. You know, how much is this worth today? My guess is this company is already worth a couple hundred million dollars just based on the fact of, of the, you know, the technology they're developing. Um, I, I encourage you all to read the Wait But Why post about Neuralink. It goes into depth about, you know, all the, the lead researchers on the teams, all the different breakthroughs they made um, of different technologies that tie into what Neuralink is building. Um, it explains the rationale for why Elon wants to create this company much more in depth, why they're choosing their certain strategy, uh, you know, uh, to implant a chip in your brain versus do it another way. Um, ton of great info there. Elon Musk is building a Hyperloop for the mind and it's called the Neuralink and it is coming whether you like it or not. Anyway, this is HyperChange. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. I think we're going to get some epic discussion going here. So please leave a comment. Um, also, huge shout out to all of our Patreon producers and supporters. Means a ton. Um, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.